Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to cover the second flattest shooting cartridge in the world. That, of course, is the 26 Nosler. So we're going to look at when this cartridge came out, the ballistics, how it compares to its competition, and see if it's a viable big game cartridge. Let's get into it. Nosler is well known for making some of the best hunting bullets. That, of course, is the Partition, the Acubond, and in 2014, Nosler decided to try a go at some of their first cartridges, and the very first cartridge they ever introduced is this big bad boy, the 26 Nosler. And Nosler themselves claim it is a hyper-performance magnum. So what makes this a hyper-performance magnum? Well, one, the case capacity. The parent case to the 26 Nosler is the 300 Remington Ultramag. Now it is shortened to fit a standard length action. So as you can see here, the max SAMI cartridge length is 3.340. But let's see what this cartridge can really do. IBC bullets. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's start looking at the 130 grain, uh, 129 grain Acubon long range, and it is almost going 3,500 feet per second. That's crazy. Now, the most popular bullet size for 6.5 millimeter cartridges is the 140 grain class bullet. And let's just see what the nozzler can do when you hand load it. And it can go almost mid 3,300 feet per second. So yeah, I, I kind of have to agree with Nosler. This is a hyper performance cartridge. Now, before I start pulling out the ballistics and how well it does downrange, I just wanted to show a visualization of what it looks like compared to its competition. So the other cartridge that you could call a hyper performance magnum is the 65300 Weatherby. Now, unfortunately, I don't have that in front of me. But there is, on the right, a 300 Weatherby next to the 626 Nosler. And so the 6x300 Weatherby has it beat, at most, by about 100 feet per second. But in a lot of cases, it's only about 50 feet per second. And in some factory ammo offerings, they're identical. And so this is what it competes with uh, as a hyper cartridge. But let's just see what it looks like compared to some of the more popular 6.5 cartridges. Now, the most popular cartridge right now, and the most popular 6.5 cartridge, is of course the 6.5 Creedmoor that's on the right. So as you can see, look at the case difference between the 26 Nosler and the 6.5. And there's about, well... The 6.5 Creedmoor shooting a 140 grain bullet around 2,700 feet per second, maybe 2,750, while, you know, the 26 Nosler is going 3,300 feet per second. So about a 600 foot per second difference in velocity. All right, lastly, I've added in, in the middle, the 6.5 PRC, which is kind of a, a short magnum. So as you can see, it's it's just a little bit taller than a 6.5 Creedmoor and a little bit wider of a case, but the 26 Nosler has a wider case and a quite a bit longer case as well. And it's going to have around a 200 feet per second advantage over the 6.5 PRC. So the 6.5 PRC is definitely a more efficient cartridge. Uh, that's one of the problems with the 26 Nosler is that it's extremely overboard. With me talking about how the 6.5 Creedmoor is basically the standard for all 6.5 cartridges, um, I know this is going to be an apple and oranges comparison, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to compare the 6.5 Creedmoor ballistics to the 26 Nosler. We're going to use the 142 grain Acubon long range with a BC of 0.625. And hand loading it, you could probably get 2750 feet per second. And the energy almost 2,400 foot-pounds. And what makes the 6.5 Creedmoor so popular is the recoil and how well it retains its energy downrange with these high BC bullets. So let's just take this out to see how far it can go before it hits 1,500 foot-pounds. And 
it can go about 400 yards. At 400 yards, it's going basically 2,200 feet per second and a little over 1,500 foot-pounds. And I want you to remember this number. At 400 yards, the 6.5 Creedmoor, when zeroed at 100, will drop 28.76 inches. Here is the 26 Nosler with that same bullet and a muzzle velocity of 3,340 feet per second. And the energy is, of, well, roughly almost 1,200 foot-pounds more than the 6.5 Creedmoor. But with that velocity comes the downside to it. Check out the recoil. 27 foot-pounds of recoil in a 9-pound rifle. That's a lot for a 6.5 cartridge. Now let's just take this also out to 400, and it's going 2,700 feet per second. And the energy is basically matching the 6.5 Creedmoor at the muzzle at 400 yards at 2,300 foot-pounds of energy. And then the drop, it is 11 inches flatter than a 6.5 Creedmoor. It's ridiculous. It's legitimately the second flattest shooting cartridge out to 1,000 yards and probably further. Okay, let's just see how far we can take the 26 nozzler before we hit 1500 foot pounds and at 700 yards it's still going 2300 feet per second and it has 1600 foot pounds of energy and only 78 inches of drop so before you hit 1500 pounds you're going to hit it roughly around 750 yards also wanted to mention at a thousand yards this cartridge when zeroed at 100 only has 199 inches of drop. Now before I end the video, I just want to talk about the pros and cons of this Hyper Velocity Magnum. So, the 26 Nosler, I asked, is it a viable big game cartridge? Absolutely. This cartridge is delivering 1,500 foot-pounds well out to 750 yards. So, yeah, it can take some of the biggest big game you can think of. The second pro that I see is this is one of the flattest shooting cartridges on the planet. So for bragging rights and for shooting long distance, maybe target shooting, uh, there's not a lot that are going to beat this. All right, the last thing is, you know, there is a flatter shooting cartridge in this. That is the 6.5 300 Weatherby. But... A lot of people won't want to get that because it's belted. I personally don't care about the belt, but for a lot of reloaders, they're not a fan of the belt. So this one is not belted. All right, so cons. Well, number one is I don't think you can really get a 26 nozzler in a budget rifle. You're going to be paying close to or over $1,000 for the rifle. Also, if you don't reload, the factory ammo is really pricey. And then the next downside is availability. If you're looking to buy factory ammo, good luck finding it. I haven't seen it for at least a couple years. Lastly, I, I mentioned this and it's not a big deal if you're a hunter and if you're only shooting, I don't know, 25 to 50 rounds a year, but uh, the barrel life is extremely short. This is a very overboard cartridge. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And the question is, would I get one? Probably not. But I'll be honest with you, I am not the biggest 6.5 cartridge fan. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if below if you do have a 26 Nosler. I'm curious to see what people think of them. I think it's, it's a pretty awesome cartridge. Uh, it's extremely flat, fast, and seems like a fun one. Thanks again for watching.